Today I'd like to deal with the question, to what extent is decision making a rational process? Um, and I'm going to make specific reference to two theories, the first of which being utilitarianism and the second deontology. Utilitarianism was first proposed by Bentham um, in the 19th century and basically the, the main theory is that people should try to please the most number of, uh, of people, i.e. make the, the majority happy. It's a, it's a theory that focuses on consequences rather than the, um, the morality of the actions that have to take place. So basically the question that you'd be posing yourself when, when thinking in a utilitarian way is which decision or which choice would make the most people happy. This has a number of problems because inevitably you do have um, somebody or, or, a, or a minority that will be negatively impacted by this decision. The theory of utilitarianism was later built on by Mill, um, who basically developed this further and made it so that it wasn't just the, the the happiness of the majority that was the goal, it was the highest quality of pleasure or happiness to the most people. That was his aim. And in fact, in doing this, he actually also um, defined what he would call high quality uh, happiness or high quality pleasure, by which I mean he saw the pleasures of the body to be lower than the pleasures of the mind. Therefore, in Mill's view, pleasures like food and sex would be considered lower than, for example, reading a book. Within education, for example, um, politicians have used utilitarian views to justify decisions such as um, the exclusion of certain uh, students with special educational needs, um, basically taking them out of class so that um, the rest of the class will, will benefit from more focused, high quality teaching. You know, um, what they're saying is that if there's somebody with special educational needs or behavioural issues in the class, it disrupts the learning of all of the other students. And that utilitarian view means that the majority of the students will be happier if that um, SEN student is taken out of the classroom. However, obviously, the minority, which is the, the student with, S, uh, with SEN, ends up suffering because he is taken away from his friends, he's taken out of the classroom. He is the minority that ends up losing out in an attempt to serve the needs of the majority. The second theory we'll be reviewing is deontology, proposed by Kant. Um, whose categorical imperative has basically a three-stage uh, way of analysing decision-making. The first being universability. So can this decision or, or can whatever you're proposing be made universal? Can it be applied everywhere? Your second stage would be by implementing this decision, are you using somebody or, or, or a group of people as a mere means. Are you using them? You know, are you taking advantage of them? The third stage is the kingdom of ends, which if you've passed the first two stages, this is your final test to see whether um, your decision is morally correct. And it relies on the fact that Kant thought everybody should be, I guess, programmed to think in the same way. So, in theory, according to Kant, everybody should view some actions as either fundamentally wrong or fundamentally right. Deontology is not so much focused on consequences as it is focused in the action. So, what Kant was, was worried about is whether the action is morally justifiable. Um, not so much as, as you know, what will happen in the end, like utilitarianism. If we were to look upon the issue that I discussed earlier about um, the inclusion of special educational needs students, 
Let's put it through the test. Let's use the categorical imperative to analyze it. Can you make this universal? Well, poten potentially, in theory, you can. Um, however, applying this, taking absolutely every student with SCN out of the classroom and educating them separately or sending them off to special schools is highly impractical and very costly. So it could be done, but with difficulty. Are you treating them as a mere means? Well, in a way, not necessarily. You're not necessarily using them. You're not using that, that person. However, the third stage of the categorical imperative is would everybody agree with this? Would everybody think that um, you know, this action is fundamentally morally wrong or fundamentally morally right? Well, in this case, it wouldn't be approved because attitudes towards um, children with SEM have changed, uh, particularly in the last 50, 60 years, and been enshrined in legislation. And there are enough people who believe that children with SEM should be maintained in their classroom and fully included in all activity with all learning aimed at catering to everybody within the classroom. So hopefully the rational process that we're looking at is the application of uh, theories like utilitarianism and deontology to analyze our decisions and to, to aid us in making the right one.